Hello, 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 and welcome back to Girl Chat Sports. We're in episode 57. Guess what? I got my girl Steph back. (laughs) I haven't seen you in like a month or a month and a half. Yeah, it's been a minute. It's been forever. We hooked up a little bit for the um, the watch party, which was cool. Yeah. We enjoyed that. And so shout out again to downtown Las Vegas Event Center for the watch party. We had our own woman cave. But Steph wasn't with us last um, podcast. We had a fill-in. But she's back, and it's all about sports again today. We've got Houston is in the news, a major, some really good stuff, some really not so great stuff. And our guest today, if you tune in towards the second half, Natasha Gransbury from um, At the Gransbury. She's also the author of the, of the Gransbury Gridiron Guide. So for all those of you ladies or gentlemen out there that want to learn a little bit about football, the rules, how to travel well, because we all love games outside of our home city. As you know, I'm an avid traveler as well. So um, please check out. That's going to be coming up later in the podcast. But first, Steph is back. We've got Vegas sports. Man, it's a great time to live in Vegas. It really is. It really is. So the Golden Knights, I actually got to go to my very first Golden Knights game against the Blackhawks, which was on the 24th of October. Um, They won the game. It was amazing. Like those the fans in there, I mean, there was a lot of Blackhawks fans, but I think in general it was just enjoyable to see people loving sports and, you know, bringing their families. There was kids out there. Everybody had their jerseys on. Here's a little tidbit. I had to hit up um, our other girlfriend, Jen Hindowski, um, who was an avid Blackhawks um, attendee as well as a Patriots fan. I had to hit her because I know she's been to a couple games. I was like, so, you know, is this is there the same bag policy for the hockey games as there is football? Because we all know about the clear bag and the small bags and she goes no but bring a jacket because it's cold I would have never realized it's how ice. cold I get it <laughs> but I didn't think it would be like freezing inside so thank you Jen for that that definitely helped me and my girl Joy out <laughs> um, and shout out to my boy Dre Andre Wade for the tickets we really appreciate that so the Golden Knights currently like tonight which is Thursday we're, we're recording a day late because we wanted to have Natasha on the on the podcast we wanted to make sure we were able to watch the World Series Game 7 last night. So we got all that taken care of. Golden Knights um, are currently 8-3 in, um, that's their record currently, and they're playing the Bruins, the Boston Bruins right now, and they are down 2-1. to one. So we'll see how that goes. But 8-3, that's an awesome record, yeah. especially for... Um, a brand new team. Yeah. I mean, you got to love Second it. Second in the Pacific Division. Got to love it. So we're excited for that. I'm hopefully we'll get to see more games live soon. I know Steph is still waiting for her first cherry to be popped inside T-Mobile Arena with the uh, Golden Knights. So that should be fun. We are playing with our fourth goalie in 10 days. And they're good. Well, I don't know the fourth one. But the first three, because <laughs> I the Blackhawks game, I think it was Dank, Dinks, Dinks. Dinks. He was amazing. Amazing. So the fourth one, maybe not so Maxime Legacy. I guess he's really Where do you new. get four goalies? <laughs> no. I mean, they had to dig deep for this one. I mean, seriously, because, I mean, the team only has how many? <laughs> <laughs> We're hoping that Flurry gets well soon. What? We're hoping that Flurry will get well soon. Got you. Okay. Well, yeah, we definitely hope that seriously. Um, on to like UNLV football. I just have to say it because, well, not like we're all watching the UNLV football here in Las Vegas, unfortunately. They are three and five, which amazingly still keeps them in third place in the Mountain West division. How is that even possible? I guess it's kind of like the AFC South or something when you can win the division at four and nine or whatever. I don't know. They surprisingly beat Fresno State last weekend, and they haven't beat them on the road since 1983, so really? kind of a shocker. Um, and they're without their starting quarterback. He suffered a head injury or something, and so they actually have a linebacker playing as their quarterback right what? now. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't commit any turnovers. He did really well. No inter- no interceptions. He rushed 11 times, and he got a seven-yard touchdown. So that was pretty exciting. Also, um, this coming Saturday, uh, we for 50 years, we've had a rivalry against the Rainbow Warriors of Hawaii. And um, Boyd Gaming and the Cal, or the California Casino, are sponsoring... Um, 
the Ninth Island Showdown. Is it Ninth or is it Eighth Island? Or maybe not. I don't know. I swore we were the Eighth Island. Vegas is apparently the, the ninth, ninth Island, island. because okay. people transplant They're all, here. There's a ton like of Hawaiians here. Yes. Yeah. Yes, so yes. anyway, the um, California cas- uh, Hotel and Casino has actually made a uh, trophy which they're going to be giving out annually, um, and it's totally Vegas style. It's a golden pineapple, and it's going to have a Welcome to Las Vegas sign on it, um, and they will be uh, giving the trophy to whomever wins this weekend. I guess we've played 26 times, and Hawaii has beat us 15 and we've won 11. And the Hawaiian game, here's the deal. I haven't gone to a lot of UNLV football games because usually it's, I don't like parking in the dirt. I don't like driving that far to Sam Boyd Stadium. But this is the one game where it gets packed. And like, I would say three quarters of the fans there are Hawaiian. Oh, for sure. It's an amazing, amazing game. So that'll be interesting to watch this weekend. Um, also in Vegas, the USL, our soccer team, released their new logo. Yeah, it's kind of cute. I like it. Yeah, it has like this. It's, they're going to be called the Las Vegas Lights FC. So it kind of has this neon light effect. And it looks pretty cool. I mean, we'll post it later on um, on our Instagram and on social media so you can see it. I think I might have tweeted it out before. I, could, I'm, I can't remember for sure. but um, So we're excited for that. Also, Las Vegas Raiders, clearly, of course, we all know um, they're not going to be here until 2020. However, the stadium is set to break ground November 13th, which is just like a week and a half away. So that's amazing. We're excited for that. Um, And uh, it's supposed to be completed by July 31st of 2020. So they weren't sure originally if it was going to be done in the season of 2020 or what, but it looks like hopefully now it should be completed and ready for the season to start. Time. All right. The other thing was being in Vegas this long, we don't, we do notice some things. And there was this building that's nearby where the stadium's going to be breaking ground at. Right. And it's this old building that had been a strip club once had been a couple restaurants before, but no one's ever been there for like years. And apparently back in May, it had like a two alarm fire there. It's just been a piece of shit building basically. Well, I didn't realize this is that it's supposed to have paranormal activity in there. It was an eyesore. I'm glad that they finally tore it down. But what if those haunting spirits are still out there and may affect the play of any visiting teams into the Raiders stadium? I like how you put it on the visiting teams. (laughs) I'm trying to tell you, except for the Seahawks. They can't, there's no curse on the Seahawks out here because there's always going to be a preseason Seahawks game. um, So we'll see how that goes. Um, And then last but not least, in regards to the Raiders, I know there's been some issues with Marshawn Lynch lately. There was the issue of him coming on the field, you know, hitting the ref, which he wasn't really hitting the ref. He came at the ref who was in the way of him trying to defend one of the players on his team, which I believe was a family, like a cousin or something like that. I'm not positive. Don't quote me on that. Anyways, he actually left the stadium, went back into the went back into the stadium, <laughs> snuck, in. snuck in, had his hoodie on and a mask over his face and watched the game and then took the Bart home. I see. Stop. Like he was trying I, to teach some foreign kid like how to I dab. I so something. wish. I so wish I could have had uh, been on that BART. Like I love the system out there. Their transportation system in California, right there. The BART system is great, and I just think that's amazing. I love Marshawn Lynch, but what you have to watch. Please take note, everybody out there. Go on Facebook. Go check out No Script by Marshawn Lynch. It's his. Um, it's his video, not even show. It's like a, like a his documentary show called No Script. It's like 15 minutes long. I think there's like three or four episodes now. Hilarious. <laughs> I, I love, love you, Marshawn. Yeah. And I swear to God, I just want to come hang out with you and be watching you on one of these little shows that you do. Because he literally, he needs like an hour. I swear he needs like an hour. <laughs> He's great. Um, on you know, I think you were gone when we announced it, but of course, you all know by now that we've got a WNBA team coming this next summer yeah. for the season. The new the stars. I'm guessing it'll still be the Las Vegas Stars. We're not sure yet. Um, and then also this weekend that I know of because I live in Summerlin, there's the huge PGA tour for the Shriners for Children's Open. All the golfers will be out here. Um, woo ha! It started this today, actually. The second? Oh yeah, today is the second, isn't it? Well, there you go. All right. So on to some NFL news. Man, talk about the roller coasters that we live on. Man, they are picking on my Zeke Elliott. <laughs> <laughs> Your poor boy Zeke. <laughs> I mean, 
just we're only in week what we're week nine now. Oh my god, the season's half over. Oh wow. <gasps> oh, please moment of silence, loud. please. <laughs> so it's been nine weeks. We've had, been dealing with the whole: Is Zeke going to be suspended? Is Zeke not suspended? Oh, he's not, but he is, but he's not. Well, I think it's official, and he's a suspended for uh, six I think games. That we're waiting for the U.S. Second District Court to make a decision by Friday to see if he can play this weekend or not. And it sounded like from a, I think I saw something where the attorneys were thinking that it was pretty much a long shot, probably wouldn't happen. Although with the way it's been going, who knows? But I do have him out of my fantasy um, league for right now. And should he do be able to play, I will put him back. However, um, it sounds like it's going to be pretty tough. We've already planned to put Alfred Morris to start in his place. Here's what I don't get about that announcement. So Jerry Jones, your manager, your general manager, is the person making the, 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 the what is it called? The public announcement regarding who's going to, what is your coach doing? Why doesn't your coach make those announcements? <laughs> I mean, why has it got to be Jerry that says, oh, yes, and so for our, our, our starting back, our starting running back, we're going to be having Alvin Moore. Why isn't the coach doing it? Did you hear that there was rumors that we were wanting DeMarco Murray back? And apparently he said he's not going anywhere. He <laughs> likes it with the Titans. I believe he's doing great for the Titans. I mean, you know, Titans have their moments, but... Um, Oh, man. I wouldn't want to go back either. Let's talk about Tony Romo, though. <laughs> I he was born Tony. to Listen, be on TV. He was born to be an announcer. He was born to be a commentator. He was born to help you link one, two, and three together. Yeah. because Predicting I, stuff. Man, he's just good. It's like it flows so naturally. You feel like you're learning something from him. It's not just like color commentary. I mean, he obviously knows the plays. He knows being a quarterback. He knows football. But it's like... I don't know. It makes you feel at home. It makes you feel relaxed when I watch, when I listen to it. Did again. I just hear Melissa say that Tony Romo is good at announcing? I never <laughs> thought in a million years that those words would come out of your mouth. I don't think they would either. <laughs> <laughs> but they did. I will give credit where credit is due. I can do that. It is appropriate. Um, but we can go back to my Seahawks now. So my Seahawks had a great, great, great win this weekend. They played the Texans. We'll talk about it more with Natasha later in the second half of the show. But Earl Thomas with the pick six right off the bat. So here's the deal. The game starts. Texans score. And it's like, really? Already? We're going to do this again? We're going to be the second half team? We're going to let them rumple all over our asses for the first half and they're going to be up 21 to nothing? Well, no. It didn't end like, it didn't go like that. They scored. We scored. They scored. We scored. It was a back and forth game. Such a good game. It was like the battle of the quarterbacks. Deshaun Watson is an amazing. And unfortunately, you know, he did get injured today, um, non-contact at practice. So he's going to be out for this season with the ACL injury. So our prayers to Deshaun Watson. We know he's an amazing athlete. Um, but back to the game. It came down. Here's the deal. It's two minutes left in the game. We're down by four. Uh, Texans have the ball. I'm like, fuck. Really? Like, we're going to do this again? Do you know how many heart attacks I have during Seahawks games these days? <laughs> and I was like, man, they got the ball. Next thing you know, they got four down. I was like, oh, so we get the ball back. But it's like a minute, what, 30, minute 40 left. And all of a sudden, P. Richardson comes out of the blue, <laughs> catches a bomb down the field. I'm talking amazing. Paul Richardson, I love Love you. I thought you guys were going <laughs> to lose, and Man. I was in and shock. And then the next thing you know, not but two play, a play later, Russell Wilson finds Jimmy Graham, who we've had a hard time finding the entire time. Jimmy Graham has two touchdowns this game and scores the winning go-ahead touchdown with 21 seconds left. Amazing. 21. Amazing. Unbelievable. I'm talking like the best Seahawks game ever so far. I mean, well, not ever, because there's been some good ones with some – Maybe some questionable calls by the refs late in the end in playoff games. But this was probably one of the best um, regular season games that I've seen. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yes, yes, yes. Anyways, um, that was the Seahawks game. Um, following the Seahawks game, we got the notification that Dwayne Brown, offensive tackle for the Texans, got traded to Seattle. We are welcoming him with open arms, apparently through Pete, Pete Carroll. He is been 
hitting hard, going hard since day one at practice a couple days ago and is going to make a great impact for Seattle. I'm hopeful that he will be able to help hold back that line a little bit so that we can actually get some running plays through there because our running game is still ain't shit. So other than that, um, we had a great game. Um, what else did the happen? Eagles are Ooh. what seven and one? Eight and one. Eight and one. Seven and one. Sorry, no, they're seven and one, and they're amazing. Carson Wentz, the guy from North Dakota. <laughs> I'm telling you, as a Cowboys fan, I am not happy that the Eagles have the best <laughs> record in the NFL right now. But after I saw these baptisms, <laughs> did you see that? Here's the deal. God is on your side. So if the Seahawks exactly. are listening or the Cowboys are listening, right. get to baptizing, okay? Right. Because Start clearly, praying. Whoa, there was a balloon that popped in here. <laughs> Holy shit, that scared the hell out of me. <laughs> okay. That was a God thing right that there. That was a God thing. God was saying, yes, you're right. I make things happen. Get baptized. So now I got to go out there and get baptized. Man, I'm telling you, There's now I have and, respect for the Eagles. <laughs> right. Well, and also not to mention, they just got a great trade. They just went and got Jay Ajayi from the Eagle or from the Dolphins for some draft picks. So now the Eagles have more of a running game. Even hello? the Dolphins are going to be sorrier than they already are. Man, if you hello, if you started with Cutler to start your season, you already were sorry. Okay. <laughs> Let's not even go there. But anyway, so yeah, the Eagles are going crazy. They've even reached out to the Lions to try and get the rights for Calvin Johnson, a.k.a. Megatron, who retired. They want him to come back, and he's actually thinking about it. Can you imagine if Megatron had Carson Wentz thrown into his ass? No. Woo, watch out, <laughs> NFC East. <laughs> no, thanks. We'll see you in Seattle, Philly. Well, maybe it'll have to be Philly. Shit. They have a better record, too. So, anyways, um, a couple of notes for fantasy footballers. Of course, like we just mentioned, Alfred Morris should be starting with for the number one running back position and for the Dallas Cowboys. Andrew Luck is currently now going to be placed on IR. So, his season has ended before it even started. Amazing. Dang. So, the Colts will stick with Jacoby Brissett, which I'm happy for. Met him during Super Senior Bowl. He's a great kid. And he's been doing fairly good for the Colts. So, looking for more from him. Um, Aaron Rodgers broke his collarbone. He's going to be out. That was a couple weeks ago. Um, Chris Hogan for the Patriots had his arm in a sling, and then we'll see how he goes with that. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo got traded from the Patriots to the 49ers. And then in the meantime, uh, Brian Hoyer gets signed by the Patriots for a three-year deal and leaves the 49ers. Kelvin Benjamin, also one of the wide receivers that most of us have on our fantasy football teams, gets traded to the Bills and then is out this game. So I'm not sure if that's because he hasn't learned the playbook yet, if something happened interim between the trade, but he will not be playing this weekend as well. Uh, quick note on college football, only because it was Washington's homecoming this last Saturday, and we beat up UCLA and won, although we're still in the 12 in the AP polls and Washington State's number 25. Um, Alabama, of course, is one, of course. Georgia, Ohio State, Wisconsin, Notre Dame, et cetera, et cetera. So the chase is still out there for college um, football playoffs, which should be starting towards the um, beginning of December, I believe coming it's coming it's coming um not too much college hoops haven't started yet but there is a kid here in las vegas richard isaacs he's 14 years old this guy this kid plays for the vegas elite he's homeschooled he's a six foot point guard leading scorer he's ranked 23rd in the nation of all the players that are supposed to be graduating for 2022 guess what he got a scholarship to UNLV. Full ride. You know He's how, 14. how proud his parents are? And they're like, whew. Oh, yeah. That just took a lot of... <laughs> Thank you for that bill that we don't have to pay. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. So... Um, anyways, you guys, we're going to get right back to you. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll come right back with Natasha Gransberry. How would you like to make the impossible possible? With professional and personal needs by Envision for You Concierge. With an array of services for you, the professional. So professional athletes, celebrities, VIP and corporate executives, Envision for You strives to assist with travel, hotel, luxury car service, dinner and show reservations, VIP services, as well as consumer relations. Envision for You also offers mobile services, as well as organic tanning, massage therapy, hair and makeup, men's grooming, 
shooting, fashion stylists, appointment setting, and more. Envision for You Concierge with nationwide services 24 7. Envision for You will never hesitate to go the extra mile for your professional and personal needs. So call today 323 300 4592. 323 300 4592. Or visit online at envisionforyou.com. All right, welcome back to Girl Chat Sports. We are back with one of our great friends of the show. We love her to death, Natasha Gransberry, a.k.a. the Gransberry and founder of Pumps Cleats Couture. Welcome, Natasha. Hello. Hello. How you doing? Hi. <laughs> so it's kind, of a, a, it's a kind of a roller coaster for you today. You had the um, – Natasha, if you guys already know um, – from Houston, um, diehard Astros, Texans fan. If you follow her on any social media, she's repping her teams 24 seven, maybe as hard, if not harder than I do my own. So, um, that's probably saying a lot too, (laughs) but, um, obviously last night you had a wave of emotions. Your guys won the world series. First time ever. Give us a little rundown about how you felt after, I mean, the entire World Series was just, I think, personally, one of the best ones I've seen in my time. Agreed. Um, and I don't know, you know, how are you feeling? How is Houston feeling after? So are you guys ready for the parade tomorrow? Is and nobody going to work? What's going on? <laughs> well, several things. One, the World Series was just, just amazing from so many standpoints. I, it's almost one of those things where if they sold all seven games of the series collection. Mm-hmm. I would buy it, right? Because it was just really that good. I mean, and obviously you feel that good when you win. But I was telling everybody yesterday before the game. Everybody's like, "Well, what do you think will happen?" And I was like, "Honestly, Game Seven to me was best pitches versus best bats." You know, because the Dodgers were known all year for the strongest pitchers. We mm-hmm. were known for the best offense scoring offense Mm -hmm. and I just felt like the will of it would carry them a little further because at some point they'd seen all the pitchers they had won in LA there was just no fear so there was it was just leave it all out you know on the field and I just felt like if they could get going whoever would win would definitely win by more than two two points I definitely felt that it was going to be that type of baseball game. And did you feel, though, that it was going to be like 5-0 in the third inning, though? Like, I, I, I turned it on and was like, wait a minute. Huh? Wait. Now, that was amazing. I, I, I was thinking little slow trinkets of home runs because, right. obviously, there had been several home runs in L.A. in games one and two. Right. And also in six. So there was, there was no reason – to believe that we wouldn't see any home runs. Um, obviously, the air helped tremendously, but in the end, I did not expect the score to be 5-0 that early. I, I did expect the Dodgers to have pitching issues. I just didn't see him being the starter for Game 7. I just knew Kershaw was starting Game 7. This is Stephanie, and I'm a Dodger fan myself, (laughs) and I probably started, turned on the game like 10 minutes after it started, and I saw that we were already down two, and then when we went down five, I probably should have just turned off the TV, because I already knew what was going to (laughs) happen. Well, the faces did change. You could tell. The momentum in their face, it was no longer like, let's keep up, let's get the lead, let's win. It was like, oh, my gosh, we're in trouble. What do we do? Exactly. I mean, when when they scored the five, it was just like his head was like, what did I just do? Like, and at that point, I don't I don't know what you do. Right. Well, and the thing, too, is that, I mean, we've got to give it up for George Springer. This guy, four straight um, home run or four home runs in four straight games. I mean, that's correct. 
I almost um, I, I've never seen that. I mean, I haven't. I, there was a time a period that I didn't watch a whole lot of baseball because well, my Mariners sucked for a long time. What can I say? But um, that's amazing. And then he also got the World Series MVP, which is amazing. Um, but what I thought is that what I thought was funny is Carlos Beltran. When I heard that name, I was like, wait a minute. Like I I've been watching the World Series, but I, and I heard the name a little bit, but I it dawned on me. I'm like, that's the same Car- Carlos Beltran that I remember when I was a kid. Like I remember him when I was in my late teens or early 20s and he was still playing then and I'm like wait a minute and they said this is his first this is his first world series and I was like whoa he's 40 like this is a great game to play you know 40 I mean you're not Tom Brady in football but I mean 40 in baseball is still pretty they're doing it and he's got his first ring after 20 years in the league it's awesome right and he was crying immediately so I believe it. He, he still respected the game enough and appreciated being a part of the team mm-hmm I really feel sad for Darvish, though. He must be hurting today, uh, blowing it in two games. Yeah, that's a bit <sighs> – it's tough. I'm sure, I know it's tough. And I, what I read today, too, is that um, Puig had his um, house broken into he again sure last did. night. Twice is, in a year. <laughs> that's crazy. Dude needs to get his security up. I don't know. Um, but what's also – I don't know if you saw the story. There was an, a Sports Illustrated article that was actually the cover story of SI back in 2014 where the guy had right. predicted the Astros to win it. And I was like, whoa, 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 how is that even possible? And, like, people are retweeting it. Like, so give us predictions for lottery numbers. You know, feel free right. to jump in and let us win some other things. But that's pretty amazing in itself. What I thought was hilarious was that uh, there was one girl on Twitter that had said, hey – I want to get me and my office off for the parade tomorrow, but my boss won't let us until unless JJ Watt responds. And he did respond and was like, <laughs> and he said, consider an off day. You can't miss the parade. Like, that's <laughs> awesome. I love JJ Watt, by the way. But some guy like bet on the Dodgers. What was it? 14 million? 14 million dollars. <laughs> yeah, I lost, lost that. That's incredible. And someone maxed out all of their credit cards to go to every single Game. No. Oh, well, at least they were good. I'm a, I'm a diehard <laughs> sports fan, but let's be very clear. I will not use my credit cards to leverage no. the I'm, world. I mean, it was a pretty <laughs> epic that, series. <laughs> I mean, maybe do a Super Bowl game. Like, you know, maybe splurge for one event. Like, I mean, live your life. I get it. But every single game and maxing them out? No, sweetie. No, no, no. Oh, Lord, that's too much. So, okay, um, World Series, we all agree, was amazing. I, and my thing is that I'm not, I'm neither a Dodger or Astros fan, but I've been just like whoever is playing the best, whoever comes out and wins it, I'm just happy. Because I think, honestly, I feel like both teams could have easily won it. I think both teams deserve to have won it because they both played their hearts out. I mean, some of those games that are going into the fourth and fifth hour, I mean – that's unbelievable baseball. I didn't get much sleep this <laughs> last two Sunday, weeks. Well, right. And Sunday was, well, first, we didn't think the other games would go that long. So that was already one way. But Sunday was wow, was a whirlwind for me as a Houston fan because <laughs> right. to, we were in Seattle playing Seattle. Mm-hmm. The Texans, and yes. as soon as the game was over, we were transitioning to sports bars and restaurants to watch the Astros. And before long, we're like, we're taking Ubers and going back to our hotel. And, the, you know, the game's still on. <laughs> I went to bed. I couldn't stay up. I had to be at work at 5 in the morning Monday. So I, I, I went to bed and woke up to who won. Well, that's the thing is that you went from one crazy game in Seattle, which it was literally down to the last 21 seconds, <sighs> then going into a five-hour game straight into baseball with that being a crazy, you know, long – I mean, that, that – as a Houston fan, and I think I even commented on one of your posts, I was like, I don't know. I don't know how cra- – that's crazy. <laughs> I couldn't even – after our Seahawks game, I was like, okay, I went home, I relaxed for a second, and next thing you know, I passed out at the ninth inning because I was so tired just from how much adrenaline and how much my emotions had gone up and down the entire day from the football game. I couldn't imagine what you guys were doing. <laughs> well, it was it, – and, you know, it, it really was its own World Series for each fan. Because, you know, the game on Wednesday night was was epic, Mm -hmm. and it was long. And, you know, then Thursday, you're like, okay, I'm going to get back to normal. It's travel day. I can relax. There's no game on tonight. 
And then Friday, game of a lifetime, you know, <laughs> and so you're like, okay, we're, we're really getting somewhere here. And at that point, I'm in Seattle. Right. So I'm seeing Friday, Saturday, Sunday's games in Seattle. And, of course, it was a letdown Saturday night, and I was like, okay, well, we can start over tomorrow. I never imagined that I would be up the entire day on, on Sunday <laughs> over sports. Never imagined it. Never. At least you were on the West Coast. It was like two hours behind where you normally right. are. How is that Correct. out there for you, though, watching the game until, like, what, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning sometimes? Yes. <laughs> She's like, yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Oh, but you, you, your adrenaline's pumping. And, and so even last night, I watched all the post-game show. I rewinded the show so I could watch the proposal again. Oh, so my so God. That, you know, you're like, it's over, but your, your adrenaline's still rushing. And even this morning on the way to work, there was light traffic. Because I know most people overslept or right. they called in. <laughs> right. And then they had to figure out how to get their lives together. Right. Because tomorrow is the parade and they know they needed to go to work today. But the major uh, school district in the city is one big school district. They are closed. So all the kids will be able to go. Oh, with their that's parents. amazing. Yeah. Right. And another surrounding school district could not close because we've had so many Harvey days. Right. And then another one, so many parents called in and complained and emailed, they just decided to close. Wow. <laughs> the parents pretty much bullied them into closing. So, so do you have a spot locked in on where you want to be at during the parade? No. So I still remember, you know, the rockets. So it's <laughs> parades and, uh-huh. and, and celebrations. So it's a little different. Like, I just want to see and take a few pictures. Right. I don't really need to see the, the you know, the up-close, perfect right. view of the, the parade. Super and that's craziness. that's probably because I've worked um, media mm-hmm. for Astros at different times, and then I've traveled to see them play. So my, you know, I'm not in a bandwagon mode. I'm right. more like, I just want to celebrate you and say thank you. Right. We finally did it, and then I can move on. And, right. And I'm, I'm in a small depression over Deshaun, so <laughs> it's probably not the same anymore. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but, I mean, I, I know it's a little bit different when you're not necessarily needing to see the players themselves because, you know, you have been to so, so many games. You've seen so many games live. But I think also, yeah, it's just – it's really the experience. I remember I went – I literally flew – the next day to go to the Seahawks parade. And, you know, even though you see those guys play all the time, but, you know, seeing the crowd and the people and just everybody that came out for it was just amazing. I know Houston's going to be, you know, probably even more of an epic parade because, I mean, you guys had Harvey, you know, you had all this destruction and despair out there um, earlier this summer. Like, I can only imagine how Houston feels right now. They've got something to celebrate. They've got this great victory. I mean, I'm sure the parade will just be emotional for a lot of people, too. Yes, and and I would definitely, like, you know, we have a major uh, company here where, well, I wouldn't say like Fortune 500, but he's major because he started his business in Houston. He groomed his business here. He grew his business, and he gives back. And he had a promotion that if you bought – uh, mattresses and mattresses sets from him, and the Astros won the World Series. Mm-hmm. You would get your money back. Shut He's up. He's already up to ten million in refunds. No way. So it's just amazing at wow. how much wow. impact he had on the city, right? And what impact the Astros winning really did, because you know the Astros were were not really here when it happened. The the storm was coming, and they were flying out, just Mm -hmm. like our football team Mm -hmm. at the time. And they ended up on the road, you know, almost two weeks before they literally could come back home. Right. So they were prepared a little better because they left and were able to take family with them as they left, Uh as opposed to the Texans left thinking they were coming back. Sure. And their families were left behind. (sighs) Still so heartbreaking. Just the tragedies that we've had in this country over the last, you know, six months even has been ridiculous. But 
Um, n- now into other sad news. We were talking earlier because I'm texting you to Lino, give you some updates on our podcast today. And next thing you know, I get the fantasy football alert that Deshaun Watson's out. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. Let me ask you, you know, the, the queen of the Texans here, what happened? Because I literally didn't even get, I had just swapped, you know, my lineups for fantasy football. I actually had Deshaun Watson. He's been doing great for me. And next thing you know, like literally a half hour later, he's out. And not just out like for the game, but out on like for the season. Non-contact injury ACL. Man. I mean. What are you, I, non- non-contact, what is the, are you tapping your toes in the, in the, I mean, I don't know. I'd say it's the same thing, but <laughs> it, it just takes the wrong tweak. Mm-hmm. And. Man, that's They just, said he didn't even make a noise. He never even called out like he was really hurt. Uh-huh. He got up. They didn't think it was that bad. And then they <sighs> tested and found out it was. Man, and after such an amazing game that he played, I mean, whether the loss, you know, obviously the loss still hurts, but the game that he played against Seattle was amazing. I mean, he really does remind me of just a taller, a few years younger version of Russell Wilson. Like, he can run, he can pass, he has, you know, a a great ability and instinct in the game. And, you know, everybody, he got the... um, the rookie of the offensive rookie that no one's ever had for AFC. I mean, he was just amazing. And then for this to happen, like literally during the week, prepping for the next big game, and now your season's over with. And unfortunately, it, it kind of puts a damper on the Texans season. Like, I, who's your guys' backup right now? Well, the backup was who actually started the first half of the Jags game at the beginning of the season. <sighs> So we'll be going back to Savage. Oh, Savage. Yes. Yes. Well, I mean, we do wish you the best. Um, I Again, I do thank you for Dwayne Brown. Um, <laughs> well, thank you for the pick. <laughs> you can have I the pick. I Dwayne Brown go on all costs. But, I mean, know. you know, I will say this, like I, when I first, because we all know the story by now regarding the Texans owner, Mr. Mc, McNair and his comment about inmates um, and he re- referenced them as, as players and not being able to control, you know, things here and there with um, Dwayne Brown was the, was the one voice that was really speaking out against it. And I think it sounded as if he was kind of the one that was kind of gather not gathering the troops, but kind of hoping to kind of figure out what they were going to do to kind of protest just that statement and just his his remarks that were made. Um, and I did notice, I don't know if you did too, um, during the game, like I would say 65 to 70% of the team was kneeling during the anthem, which I thought... Correct. From, from what portion of it I could see, that, that would be about accurate. Right. And I'm not even sure everybody was out there. I didn't seem uh, like it well. at first. I couldn't. Yeah, I, I wasn't. I wasn't able to sh- tell completely, but I, I could definitely tell that more than just a few that are usually kneeling were kneeling. Um, and right. I know he had a major issue with what was being said, and it was funny because Russell Wilson had made the comment like he should have just showered and stayed here after the game because <laughs> the trade happened. Like literally, game ends, you get alerts that Dwayne Brown's going to be a Seahawk. I was like, oh, okay. Thank you, Lord, because God knows we needed an offensive line. So I'm excited about it. Um, I I, I do like Lane. I don't like his Twitter fingers, but um, I hopefully he'll be able to help you guys out a little bit in the in the cornerback uh, arena. I think he, I, you guys are keeping him. He failed his physical, so we got an extra pick. <gasps> oh, shit. We got to keep his ass now? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I'm, like, trying to get him, like, go, bye, leave. Yeah. Failed his physical. Yeah, I failed his physical. Wow. That's probably why we don't need him. Probably we're trying to get rid of him. <laughs> Dang it. Did you do that his Twitter finger? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, gosh. Well, Natasha, we're glad to have you again. I'm so glad that it worked out. It's like I had hit you probably a month ago just to say, hey, let's, you know, have you back on after the Seahawks-Texans game because I know it would be a great game and whatnot. And next thing you know, it comes to be where the Astros are in the World Series and it goes to Game 7. And we literally held off our podcast one day so we could make sure that we were all here to listen and be able to celebrate with you, even though 
Steph's kind of a Dodgers fan. <laughs> well, but she's not totally celebrating. She's enjoying the moment, but she's not celebrating. Right, right, right. She she enjoyed good baseball. But that's all fair because I'm not celebrating Sunday, but I enjoyed the moment. <laughs> exactly. So everybody, everybody has a small win and a small loss. All right. So Natasha, are we going to see you do the South Side Challenge on your Instagram? <laughs> You know what? Honestly, I really made. That's like one of my favorite songs to do when I go out. Uh-huh. If it comes on, I, like, because I actually live on the south side. I live more southwest, but I live south. So everybody south who plays that song anyway. So it's it's something I always do, and especially with like some of my college friends. So when King Karan did that today, I was like, it's about to start a trend. <laughs> oh, I love it. But in an hour, it was like, okay, it's outside time. So <laughs> I, I will probably, I'm trying to decide now if I'm doing it with friends or if we're going to wait till Sunday. Like, we, I'm not sure because, like I said, there's like an empty air now uh, in the city yeah. for the team. And, and, and like you said before, it's not that you want to disrespect Savage. I mean, teams play football, mm-hmm. but there was something different going on. And, and, and I know you don't have much time, but I just want to share, like, the Seattle fans, I've been to 26 stadiums. That was number 26. Mm-hmm. And that was the best fan situation I have ever been in, ever, by mm-hmm. far. Next was Green Bay, but that was truly the best fan situation. And it was even more so because they really were enjoying watching Deshaun. Right. They didn't want to lose to him. They didn't like him scoring, but they enjoyed watching him. Yeah. They were literally high fiving us like he's this great. You can I appreciate mean, him and his talents. I mean you could. Right. Yeah. You didn't feel like your team was playing bad and that's why Deshaun scored. Right. It's just Deshaun was so great. You you had to say, Wow. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. just wow. And so that type of energy and level that you get, it you just can't duplicate it. So that's not what I'm going to see on Sunday. And so because I know that, it's a totally different world. Oh, I know. God. Well, maybe they can have him on the parade or tomorrow. Hopefully, maybe they can, you know, get him up there and, and give it kind of boost a little morale. But that does, it's unfortunate what happens. But again, it is the game of baseball. And although it was a non-contact, I guess it's kind of, you know, what you face sometimes when you're in the league. Correct. And, you know, you got to play how it goes. So, we wish the best to the rest of your season, um, you know, and congratulations with the Astros again. We definitely will have surely have you back on again at some point, maybe when it comes down to, you know, the Rockets or whatever else when we get back further. I've been, I've been slacking on basketball because I've been so into football and baseball. It's like, okay, now I can get back into some basketball again and kind of, you know, <laughs> even it out a little bit. But anyways, we appreciate you. Please let the um, audience know or the listeners know where they can find you. And also, um, tell them about the book real quick, too. Well, definitely the book is always available at www.thegrandsbury.com. I'm the Grandsbury on all social media. If you need to learn the basics to football, what are first downs, the referee call, and just how to travel, the book's a great option. It's $15, including shipping. I think everybody would enjoy it. It's a very easy read. But like I said, you can find me at the Grandsbury on every social media, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And Twitter. Okay. Right on. Thanks, Natasha. We will check back with you again later. Good night. Thanks. Once again, thanks to Natasha for joining us. I can't wait to get her back on. She's such a fun to have on. Jeez. Um, Real quick, you guys. I know about you guys, but um, I know we kind of briefly touched upon it. I haven't been watching basketball much because the World Series has been that amazing. Even my brother commented and was like, whoa, you're watching the World Series? And I'm like, I know. It's really good baseball. (laughs) It's the first World Series that I've ever watched in its entirety in my life. So I've skipped out on basketball. I know that this is what I have the gist of the notes that I've gotten so far. The the Cows aren't doing well. They've lost a few in a row. They had to call a player-only meeting, which you know that can't be good. Um, I know Markel Fultz from the Washington Huskies. He's out indefinitely with a right shoulder injury with the Sixers. Yeah, I know. And I think that the Warriors were even not even winning some games. But what, yeah. about, what about your Lakers? How's Lonzo? What's up with the What's up with the balls? Well, 
blondes. Uh, um, I haven't seen LeVar on, on TV much lately. So, well, here's the thing. LeVar predicted that Lonzo wouldn't lose two games in a row. He <laughs> went up against Wall, Ooh. and he served him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was a good game, but, you know, like he did good competition against Wall, and now they're going to be um, facing the Nets on Friday. Okay. So he'll be um, facing... D'Angelo Russell for right. the first time since he got traded. So we'll see how that goes between them. Okay. Uh, actually, um, D'Angelo Russell's been doing fairly decent for the Nets. He's scored at least 30 points twice in like seven games. Wow. Okay. Well, that's good. We'll keep an eye out for Alonzo and hopefully not for LeVar. I don't want to see him <laughs> ever anymore. So we'll keep you posted for the next podcast in regards to more basketball because now that baseball is over with, we can actually concentrate a little bit more Watch. on watching basketball games, which I've noticed is that with basketball, football, and baseball, I haven't gone to the gym once in like two or three weeks. Oh, yeah. I don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no gym, no sleep. That's kind of how our lives are these days. So um, in other news, we've got arms of the NFL. Who are you ready for that? these? Ones? So, I, in honor of our guest Natasha, I, I, I customized the arms of the NFL to be for the Texans, with a little caveat at the end. So, the first one I'm sure you all are aware of. I know he's not playing currently, but JJ Watt, aka Justin James. I love his real. I just love Justin James. He should just went by that. Anyways, number 99 from the Texans, defensive end. He actually had fractured his leg and he had to have surgery, so he's out for us this season. But he has some amazing arms. And then. Um, you might have seen these arms uh, quite some, uh, quite a bit in Sunday's game. Jadavion Clowney, number 90 for the defensive end for the Texans. Not only does he have amazing arms, but they're long and thick. <laughs> <laughs> just what a girl likes. I'm just saying. Jadavion Clowney's arms are amazing. Okay. <sighs> and then, um, of course... We just touched upon him a little bit, too. Dwayne Brown, number 76, offensive tackle for was the Texans, and now is with the Seahawks. He actually, there's not too many times that you'll hear me say offensive tackle in regards to arms of the NFL, because they're usually huge, big guys that aren't like necessarily ripped in the arms. No. Mr. Brown has some arms, and we Massive welcome you. Massive arms. And we welcome you to the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> Where did that? <laughs> Where did that come from? Oh, my goodness. So thank you for Arms of the NFL. We'll definitely post some pictures for you guys later because these arms you cannot miss. Um, and some O's and O's news. Um, I don't know if you were watching it all this weekend, but Zach Miller, the tight end for the Bears, had a really gruesome leg injury. Like it, He appeared to have broke his leg earlier like on Sunday, catching a, um, a touchdown. Like He dislocated his knee. Apparently there was some artery damage, and he was still like in – I can't remember what city they were in – he actually, they thought he might have, they Saints. might have to, they might have to, uh, in New Orleans, they might have to amputate his leg. They actually were able to have surgery to save his leg. But could you imagine going in one day to play your away game and coming out with no leg? Not to mention they didn't give him the touchdown. <laughs> That's the most important part. <laughs> Damn it. He's fuck a leg. Man, <laughs> he seriously could have lost his leg. Seriously, it's crazy, right? In regards to losing his things, I mean, the, the, I know it's not the way to link the stories, but... <laughs> That was terrible. <laughs> There's a seven-year-old girl here in Las Vegas, Haley Dawson. I, if you were wary, she threw out the first pitch for the Dodgers-Astros game on Saturday. And she did so by using a 3D printed hand, which was created here at, U at UNLV by a I grad student. It. it was an amazing story. Um, Dawson's only seven, but apparently three years ago they started using these 3D printers to create these hands for her. And the hands use fishing wire to move the fingers around, allowing her to grasp items. She's a cute, cute girl, and she always wants to throw the pitch out for games now. Maybe she'll be in some 51 games. It takes 13 hours to print her hand, and they're like trying to develop technology to make it a little easier, flexible uh Growth and wow. everything. Amazing. Um, and this is a real quick shout out to the Seattle Sounders. I believe they're playing currently right now against the Whitecaps for their game, their uh, playoff game. Um, that's MLS soccer, of course. They were tied in the first game um, with the Whitecaps earlier this week. So good luck to them. Um, An amazing job by the um, different athletes in football and basketball for Halloween. You had Russell Wilson when it's Pete Carroll at Seattle's Children's Hospital. Um, uh, Randy Moss went as Charles Woodson, and Charles Woodson went as Randy Moss. <laughs> and um, you also had, uh, let's see, 
Russell, Russell Westbrook, they went as white men can't jump. Isaiah Thomas was Easy E. I mean, there were some great costumes. I mean, I think we post them on Instagram. But anyways, that's enough for episode today. We are episode 57. Stephanie, where can everybody find you? You can find me on S underscore wash on all social media. And you can find me at Seattle, the number four, underscore life, Seattle four, underscore life. And you can find us at Girl Chat Sports on all social media. Follow us, like us, check us out on the Apple Podcast app. Search for Girl Chat Sports, all one word, as well as on Podomatic at uh, www.podomatic.com slash Girl Chat Sports. We'll check you guys later. Bye. Bye. Thanks for checking out another great episode of Girl Chat Sports. And remember, we don't have balls, but we know how to cover them. Until next time, guys.